Hi everyone, just a quick reminder that if you want to follow along the journey of making this dress in real time with me, both on Instagram and YouTube, then please consider supporting me on Patreon. You get to choose how much to pledge per month and you will receive live updates both on my close friends Instagram stories and access to all of the YouTube videos right now. Hope you enjoy the video. Hey guys, so it's now the 8th of May and what I did throughout the week was I unpicked, unstitched, unpicked, same thing, um, all of the stitching along the waistbands um, and took the waistbands off. So here you can see all of the, the front and the back waistbands taken off the skirt. I am probably not going to do any more waistbands. I found that having the cotton and the satin was just really bulky around the waist and I did not like it. So what I'm going to try and do instead is use um, the cotton tape and the ribbon and maybe I will use this bias binding uh, to finish off any raw edges rather than covering them with actual fabric. So that's what I'm thinking. Um, you can see that I've managed to salvage both the cotton tape and the ribbon, which is really great. Um, I'm actually surprised that I unpicked all of the stitching and I was able to successfully get my cotton tape. I just didn't want to have to re-sew the hook and eye and also like I don't want to waste it so that's why I did that. Um, I, I've i currently got um, Red Threaded's demo of padding up a dress form because um, I think that's where I went wrong is that my dress form wasn't my size as in around my waist and so every time I put the skirt on the dress form it was giving me an inaccurate reading of how this would actually fit on my own body. Um, let me just go to the dress form now. So here's the dress form. What I'm thinking of doing is padding it out. So I've got my padding here. Um, if you're wondering what I'm using, I'm using this stuff from Spotlight. Um, it was like $14, so that's great. Um, and I'm just going to cut out pieces and then pad it around the waist mostly. Um, but I might also pad out the hips and yeah, I, I think that's all I would really need to do there. As for the skirt, it's down here. Um, you can see that all of the stitching has been pulled out where the waistband was um, and I've just got my basting stitches here with the teal and purple thread. Um, so the purple thread here was based, the original basting stitching, um, but the teal thread is where I want my new waistline to be. So you can see how much I want to take up in the back of the uh, back of the skirt um, and the other thing I need to do is like get rid of all of the the actual thread from the previous stitching because I don't want that getting in the way um, so I'm going to pad my dress form now and I will be back with another update I just finished padding out the dress form. I tried my best. I mean, I just wanted to make the waist a bit bigger and then I obviously had to make the bust part and around the back a little bit bigger as well. I don't know if that will work, but I'm going to leave it at that. Um, let me just turn it around so you can see. Yeah, I'm just going to leave it like that and hopefully the skirt along this new waistline will be a more accurate representation of how it would sit on myself. So what I've got here is the skirt inside out and folded along the center back and the center front is just squashed up here but you can see the openings of the side seams here and I am going to focus on the back portion of the skirt which is this part here on the fold. Um, what I've got here is the purple is the original basting stitching that I had put in and the teal is the, where I want my new waistline to be. So you can see that I want to actually take off this much fabric in the back to hike that back part up a bit more. Um, and then as for 
the teal stitching on the other side. Um, it's not that even because I did this stitching um, just as like a rough rough guesstimate of where I want my new waistline to be. So I'm going to use both of the teal stitching as a guide to figure out the most symmetrical way to do this. Um, but what I'm thinking of doing is attaching this cotton tape directly to the fabric rather than doing what I was trying to do before, which was add a waistband and then like sandwich this in the waistband and, and do it that way. I'm just going to use this literally as the waistband. Um, yeah, so this is the, the cotton tape that just hooks in the front like that. And that's how the back portion will attach. Um, so I'm not really sure what I'm going to do. I think first, first of all is to just chop the excess fabric. So let's do that now. Um, and I'm, I'm obviously going to leave quite a bit of room as leeway. But I know for sure that I don't need this excess fabric um, because that was causing all of the wrinkling and puckering at the top of the skirt when I put it on myself. So that's gone and this is sort of following the new waistline um, so let me just bring you guys closer just a bit there you go um, so if I turn that over you can sort of see that that is relatively the same on both sides and I am going to find the back the, the center back of this tape. So if it closes in the front like that, then the center back of the tape will be will be about there. And now I just I've just got to think it will attach this way, I'm pretty sure. And that will go around like that. So that is what I'm thinking of attaching this directly to the skirt. Um, yeah, there's not much else to say. Um, so what I'm going to do is go ahead and start pinning. I'll probably pin a bit further down because I know that this is still excess material and this is the teal stitching is actually where I want my waistline to be, um, so I might pin it about there, and I'll just pin all the way around. So I've now pinned all along the top edge, as you can see. Um, I would say that the seam allowance is about half an inch. Yeah, just about half an inch. I mean, it's not precise, but it'll do. And um, I think what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to hand baste this waistband down um, and then that way I can try it on, on the mannequin, <laughs> um, and see if it actually is what I am after. Um, when I was pinning down the waist tape, it seems like, I don't know why, but it seems a lot smaller than what I remember. Hmm. And also, I'm not too fond of that closure being off center. I don't know what happened there, but um, <laughs> let me try repinning it and making sure that this is in the center, and then I will hand baste this all down. That's better. That is now center. Um, and I've decided I'm not going to hand baste this because 
I could easily just base this on the sewing machine. So that is what I'm going to do. I'm going to run a stitch all along, probably, I'm thinking, I'm thinking along the bottom edge, maybe, or somewhere around the middle, probably in the middle actually, or like around here. So one quarter, one, two, no, one third. Wow. One, yeah, like one third of the waistband, I think. I will just sew this and I will show you what I end up doing. Um, but hopefully, hopefully that position is right because I really don't want to have to do this again. Actually, you know what I'm thinking now? I probably should just um, do the pinning of the ribbon on the front side of the waistband, of the, of the waist, because I don't want to have to transfer this all the way to my sewing table, only to transfer it back again to pin this part. So I'd rather pin this while it's on the floor right now, and then I can sew both of the waistband things at once. Right, so I've got my ribbon here. Um, I just stitched in the middle. Um, so this is the ribbon that I salvaged from the second attempt at the waistband. Um, but I'm just going to literally plop this, <laughs> plop this on following the teal stitching line. Um, same way I did the cotton tape on the back portion of the skirt. Um, and then, yeah, we'll just go from there. So I'm thinking the ribbon will be... I'll probably do it this way. Um, I'll pin it to the inside, so to the cotton rather than to the satin. Um, and I'm probably going to pin it with the right side of the ribbon. So there is a silky part and then there's like a rougher side um, with the silky side facing that way. Yeah. Then at least when the ribbons come around and tie towards the back, the shiny part will be technically around um, on like facing the outside, but it's just ribbon. No one really sees whether or not it's the shiny side or the matte side. But yeah, something that I am, I've decided to do just now. <laughs> so I'm going to pin this along the teal stitching line, same way as I did the other, the other waist so I, I what well, other, other waist band thing and again I'm just going to try and keep this to about half an inch of seam allowance above the waist so yeah that's what I am going to do and I will speed the rest of this up And we're all pinned so that is what hang on I'll zoom out that is what we're working with so far so the ribbon is all pinned there and same goes with the back portion of the dress with the waist tape cotton tape stuff sorry I keep getting my words jumbled up um, <laughs> but yeah I'm going to take this beast over to the sewing machine and I'm going to do long running basting stitches um, just so I can try it on and if I need to I can take the stitching out and I don't have to worry about um, using the seam ripper like I did last time where I fully secured the um, both the cotton tape and the ribbon into the dress. I just want this to be a temporary solution just so I can try this on myself and on the mannequin. I'll probably do it on the mannequin first, make small adjustments, and then I want to try it on myself before fully sewing it on.
So all I've done is just sewn in the center of both the ribbon and the cotton tape. And I just used, I used the longest stitch length, which is a five on my machine. Um, and I did do a couple of back stitches, but not too many to the point where it would be a pain to unpick if I need to. So I'm going to put this on the dress form now and if I'm happy with that then I might also try it on myself and then we'll go from there. So this is how the dress looks on the dress form. Um, so as for the back skirt panel, um, this is fitting much nicer than it was before. Um, you can see that there's no wrinkling going on here um, and it just goes straight down. What I am thinking of doing is perhaps making like a little um, bum pad that sort of just fills out this portion. Um, just behind here to give it a nice shape um, and it will also prevent any of this uh, sinking in and forming any wrinkles. So I'm hoping that something can be put in there and I'm actually thinking of using the leftover batting to make that uh, bum pad. I'll just use some spare cotton and this padding. Um, and it fits really nicely around to the front so this is fitting nice and snug, which is exactly what I want because then I, then I know that this is actually going to hold up the whole train, um, which is quite heavy. As for the front portion of the skirt, there is quite a bit of overlap here, as you can see, um, which is good because it hides the, um, the openings and um, I think it, it also helps to smooth out bulkiness on the sides as well. So rather than having the bulky seams right on the sides and making the profile from the front look wider. Um, I think it's got a nice smooth, um, smooth edge. And then also this, this fold of where the um, opening is, that fold um, creates that nice A-line outwards shape. Um, as for the ribbon being tied around to the back, um, it's quite hard to tie it quite taut. So this front skirt panel tends to droop down a bit. Um, I'm pretty sure this would be easier to tie on myself rather than on a dress form that um, is hard to get around. But I think even, even with the front panel drooping down a bit, that works completely fine um, because you know, you've got the bodice coming on over the top and the bodice would probably have this V shape coming down to hide any of this. Um, so that is how everything looks right now. Um, I think the next step is to, I think it is to create the, the bum pad because without the bum pad then I won't get a true accurate representation of what it is um, that this skirt will be sitting on top of. Actually now that I say that I won't have an accurate representation of how this skirt will look until I make the petticoat. Hmm. Well, I'm thinking, I'm thinking it'd be good to make some sort of little bum pad anyway, something very slight, like nothing too crazy. Um, and I also just remembered, I think I'm going to have a hoop skirt underneath this skirt to help with the shape of the back of the, the skirt. Um, otherwise, it's just not going to hold its shape very well. Um, so there is that that I need to think about. Hmm. Um, yeah, so maybe, maybe I will actually quickly whip up a bum pad right now and then I can figure out this situation over the bum pad. <laughs> mm -hmm. 
I just cut out this semicircle shape and sewed the two pieces together all along the curved edge and this straight edge has just been left open like that and I am going to well, turn this inside out, outside in um, and then I'm going to stuff it with some of this um, batting that I used to pad the dress form with. So I think I'm going to cut like various semicircles and stick them in here and then sew this shut and add a cotton tape tie or perhaps some ribbon. I've got some leftover ribbon here. That should be enough ribbon. Yeah, that would be enough. And that should be a bum, bad, a bum pad. Good to go. I thought I would just quickly come on here and show you what I've done. I've just cut out some shapes <laughs> um, and then I've also just stuck some scraps in under there and put one of those semicircle shapes over the top to hide all of those scrap pieces. And I've also folded this edge over and now I'm just quickly hand sewing this really messily um, down and I think I have no idea if this will work really, um, but I'm trying it. Um, I'm hoping that this will create a nice shape um, to make sure that the back of the skirt doesn't uh, like fall inwards. I want it to fall outwards over a nice curved shape and I hope that this is going to provide me with said curved shape. So, you know, I probably should like Google bustle pads <laughs> like and, and learn from history but I honestly can't be bothered right now um, and it's not a historical garment but I guess it does have some similarities with uh, Victorian style dresses I am going to use a truly Victorian bodice pattern as a base for the bodice though, um, so that that should be good. I was actually thinking about um, making the skirt using a truly Victorian pattern. Um, the one that I was looking at most especially was the, I think it's like a butterfly skirt, um, where it's got like a huge train out the back. But the thing about those patterns is that, one, I don't ever think that I have enough fabric to do what those patterns require. And two, it'd be a lot of printing um, involved because the pattern pieces are so big. So that's why I always tend to just like randomly cut out skirt shapes to create my skirts um, rather than following a pattern as such and I think it all comes down to they're just shapes so as long as you have the general shapes then no matter what your skirt's going to look like a skirt obviously it's not going to be uh, exactly like if you were to do it following a pattern but no one can really tell and at least that's what I, <laughs> I, I go for the, oh, no one can really tell sort of look. Um, as long as it looks something like what I'm after, then I'm happy with that. And that is exactly what I'm doing with this bum pad. <laughs> it's a, oh, no one can tell, but as long as it provides the, the shape and support that I am looking for, then that's all that matters. Sorry about the, um, the little side conversation about historical things, but I just know that um, these sorts of bum pads or bustle pads as they're called 
um, is a historical thing. So just note that the one that I'm making today is not historical. It's just a bum hat made out of scrap wadding and cotton material and no pattern, just by eye. So I am going to speed up the rest of this footage and then you can check in with me. I can check in with you uh, when I've actually sewn around the whole thing and I'm ready to insert it into the cotton lining, oh not lining, like the cotton outer shell fabric, yeah. So now I have this thing, <laughs> it actually looks like a, um, oh, what are they called? I don't know what it's called, um, like the Western term, but I call this curry puff. It looks like a curry puff. Um, but anyway, um, I'm now going to put it into this cotton shell. Hold up. Okay, so I'm literally just going to place it inside here. Um, it probably won't fit exactly right, but whatever, it works. <laughs> At least the edges are soft and malleable, so I can fold them inwards if I need to. So that sits in like that. This is not the greatest, <laughs> but I just want something to provide a bit of shape and support. That's all it's for. So you can see that in there and I'm going to close up this edge. I'm actually really glad that I cut this on the salvage because now I don't have to deal with raw edges. So I could just leave it if I wanted to. So I'm not sure how I'm going to attach the ribbon. Hang on, here's my ribbon. So if I just find the center of my ribbon, which is about there, I'm thinking, thinking of just pinning my ribbon like that. Actually, what I should do is probably close up, don't worry about the ribbon for now, is probably close up this edge before I attach the ribbon. So to do that, I think I'm just going to do this, whatever I'm doing now, tuck, tuck that in, fold this over, and sew that. I think that's all I'm going to do. That seems to work. So I'm just folding the edge over. like it will do fine. Put another pin there. So hopefully you can see what I did there. Um, I'm just going to repeat that on the same side, on the other side, sorry. And that, that should be that should be fine. And then I can attach the ribbon. Now I have this.
this thing. Um, there's my dodgy sewing. I mean, it looks it looks okay. <laughs> and this is the back. Or maybe that could be the front. I meant the um, the outside. Anyway, I'm going to attach the ribbon now. So again, finding the center of my ribbon, which is about there. And I think I'm just going to attach the ribbon like that. Just pop a couple of pins in. So I'm just going to sew all across the top edge and that should be good to go. And here we go, the finished product. I don't actually know if it will work, but um, I'm hoping it will. So I'm hoping this will tie around the waist in the front and then that will form some nice shape uh, just at the back of the skirt to fall over. I don't know if I'm going to use it this way or this way. Anyway, let's go put it on the dress form now. Now, I don't know if you can actually see a difference because I sort of can't, um, but the, the pad, the bustle pad is like just there. Um, and it, it does it does smooth out the the look of the back of the skirt I think um, it does help um, and it's very subtle I think because the skirt's so heavy it just sort of compresses it down but look it's better than nothing and I think what I'm going to do now is I'm actually going to put the bustle pad and the skirt on myself and make sure that everything's sitting how I want it before I properly sew the um, the cotton tape and the ribbon down to the waistbands. Why do I keep saying waistbands? There are no waistbands on this thing. To the waist. Um, that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to do that off camera because it is a struggle to put this on myself and try and figure out where I'm going to put the camera because this thing is so large. Um, and I have nowhere like in my bedroom where the full length mirror is to place the camera. So I am not going to do this on camera, but I will be back in a sec. So I just came back from trying on the skirt. Now I'm pretty happy with where the waistline is um, and the bum pad does actually help. It's very subtle though, like you can, like you wouldn't even know that I had a bum pad on. Um, it, it's just extremely subtle, which I guess is good, but um, I was expecting it to provide a bit more oomph, but you know, whatever. Um, as for the actual sewing of the waist tape and the ribbon on the waist line, um, I'm going to go ahead and actually do that now with proper stitching. Um, there was a little bit of puckering around the side back panels so like um, so not the exact back which is over here but around here this area like this needed to be adjusted a bit higher um, which I mean I could do if I just take out some of these stitches around that area and then pull that a bit higher but um, actually I might I might actually do that because it will it will look better but it's a very minor thing, like you can barely notice it um, since there is a bit of overlap of the, um, of the front skirt panel over the top of this part where it um, warps a little bit. Actually, now that, now that I think of it, because there is so much overlap and it basically covers the warping of this section, I'm just going to leave it. Um, it's good enough. I've already spent... I'm going to say close to a month on this skirt and this is where I've gotten so I'm just going to sew it down um, I'm going to sew uh, I'm probably going to sew one stitch 
quite close to the edge, I think. Actually, or I might just sew exactly on top of the stitching I already did. Perhaps I'll just do that. No, I will sew one that's closer to the edge, the bottom edge of the tape. And then I'll also sew one in the center, I think. Yeah, I think that's what I'm gonna do. Okay, I'll do that now. Okay, so I'm not sure how well you're going to be able to see this, but I've sewn along the, what is this, cotton tape. <laughs> I've sewn along the bottom edge. I've sewn in the middle. I actually took out all of my basting stitches, took out all the threads as well, so there wouldn't be any hanging threads anywhere. And yeah, so I've sewn those two lines. This is what we've got and then we've got the excess seam allowance up here. I did the exact same thing for the ribbon on the other waist, other waist, other, you know what I mean, the front portion of the skirt. Um, so I sewed quite close to the bottom edge of the ribbon and I also sewed in the center. Again, I took out my basting stitches, which were originally there um, and took out all the threads as well. So that is what we've got on this side and for the back we've got this. Now I am going to trim down this excess material. I'm going to trim quite closely to the existing seam that I just sewed. Um, actually I'll, I'll start doing that and you can see how closely I'm trimming. I'm going to start on over here. So I don't need any of these uh, teal or what remains of the purple stitching anymore. So I am good to cut that off. I'm just going to use my little scissors here and I'm going to cut about there. Focus. I'm going to cut there all the way along. Wow, that's thick. Okay. Okay, so I can get rid of this stuff now <laughs> um, and this is what I'm left with so you can see that the waistband I'm now calling this the waistband because it literally is but the cotton tape is literally my waistband now and this is going to fit like that and I just need to cover up this raw edge and for that I am going to use some bias binding and I think I mentioned this quite a while ago but I decided that I'm going to use bias binding um, because this is the same sort of thing I used for Jasmine's pants and it kept them very, what's the word, very thin. It wasn't bulky at all. Um, so that is why I'm going to go with this. So I think I'm literally just going to place it on top like that and so either side of the boning, uh, not the boning, of the bias binding and that should hide the raw edges and make it all nice and neat along that top edge. Um, keep in mind that this waistband section of the skirt is going to be hidden by a bodice anyway so that's why I do not care that this part doesn't look that great serves its function and that's all that matters to me. So I'm going to go ahead and cover up that raw edge with the bias binding now. So that actually worked really well. Um, I 
think you can see that on camera. The bias binding quite nicely covers the raw edge and this is what the inside of the waist line looks like. Um, so this tape is essentially acting as my waistband and um, it will close in the front like that and this will go all the, all the way around the back. So I think that is a really nice finish. Um, yeah, I'm very happy with that. So since that worked out really well, I am going to do the exact same thing for the opposite side, which is where the ribbon is. So I'm going to trim down this excess material quite close to the existing stitching line, and then I will just apply um, this bias binding on top to cover the raw edge. I think with this, it will be a little bit different in that the bias binding is literally the exact same width as the ribbon. So that just means that when I sew it on, on this side to cover the raw edge, like keep in mind this will be gone, um, I will just have to make sure that my bias binding aligns exactly to the ribbon on this side and that will provide it with strength because you've got multiple layers of material here and it will also um, it will also just nicely align with this uh, stitch line so I know where to place this bias binding as I go and put this through the sewing machine. Um, so let's start cutting away the excess material. Finally, the waistband is done. Here is the front waistband from the outside. So you can see the bias binding all along there. And that's really nicely covered off the, the raw edge. It's a little bit of fluff, but that's, I can easily just cut that off, or pull it out. Um, here's the inside. In hindsight, I probably should have sewn the ribbon so it was facing the opposite way so I wouldn't have all of this fluff and raw edge ribbon there but look that won't cause any problems. Um, the stitching is not great but I don't care. <laughs> um, I am just happy that this waistband has now been sewn. It's done. Um, I might want to neaten up the edges of these ribbons. I probably should use a lighter or something, but I don't have one. Hmm. Or I'll just leave it for now. Um, the other thing that I wanted to do today, but it's already 4.30. <laughs> I've been at this for four and a half hours. <laughs> that just goes to show how slow I am. Um, the other thing that I wanted to do today, I don't know if I will do it, we'll see. Um, is I wanted to add pockets into the side seams. So here you can see the side slit opening and um, this is actually a very good place to put the pockets um, because when I did try this on earlier, that is naturally where my hand would go if I wanted to put my hands in pockets. Um, so yeah, I think I am going to probably have a break right now. Um, and maybe I'll get around to doing the pockets, we'll see. Or I could just leave that for tomorrow. Anyway, I'm really happy that I finally got the waistband section done. So that is how it looks from the outside. This is how it looks from the inside. I think they work perfectly for what they need to do. They're strong. Well, I hope this ribbon is strong. Apparently cheap ribbon is quite strong anyway. Um, yeah, it's strong, it's secure, it will hold up the train, it will hold up the weight of the skirt, which 
I have no idea how much this weighs, but it's heavy. <laughs> um, yeah, and you know, it's not bulky, it's quite thin. So hopefully that will lay quite nicely underneath the bodice when I get around to doing the bodice, which is probably months away. Anyway, that's all I have for today, unless I get around to doing the pockets, but I'll probably just put that in the next video. So yeah, that's it for today. Thank you for following along and I will see you in the next video or the next clip. <laughs> Bye.